Hi guys, welcome to this 15th tutorial in this series of programming PIC microcontroller with flow code for PIC for absolute beginners. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to control a DC motor with a PIC microcontroller. DC motors are used in many industrial, commercial and domestic applications. We have DC motors in toys, irrigation pumps, robotics, drills, and in many applications. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how you can interface a DC motor with a peak microcontroller. You can see how you can rotate it in other clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. A DC motor cannot be driven directly from a peak microcontroller spin because we know DC motors require high current and high voltage than a peak microcontroller can handle. A peak microcontroller usually operates at plus 5 and plus 3.3 volt and its input output pin can provide only up to 25 milliamp of current which in most of the cases is not enough for a motor. Typical small DC motors require 12 volt and consume 300 milliamp current which is beyond what a microcontroller can handle. However, there are a couple of interfacing techniques that can be used. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss T interfacing techniques. A net bridge is constructed from four transistors connected to port B. MOSFET transistors can easily carry high current and voltage, which can be enough to drive a small DC mode. For example, the VN66 is an operating voltage of 12 volt with an operating current of about 1 amp. An edge bridge is basically a simple circuit containing four switching element with a load at the center in an edge-like configuration. The switching elements are usually bipolar or fat transistors. The top end is connected to the power supply and the bottom end is grounded. The operation is fairly simple when Q1 and Q4 are turned on by applying logical 1 at RP0 and RB2, the left lead of the motor will be connected to power supply while the right lead is connected to ground. Current flows through the motor which energizes it, let's say in the forward direction or clockwise direction. If Q2 and Q3 are turned on, the reverse will happen, the motor will rotate in reverse direction or anti-clockwise direction. You should never turn on Q1 and Q2 or Q3 and Q4 at the same time as you short circuit your power supply. This will destroy your bridge or something else in your circuit. This is the first technique that we can use to interface a DC motor with a peak microcontroller using four MOSFET transistors and four diodes. Instead of using all these components, you can also use a motor controller chip like the LMD18200T, the L293, the L293D and many more. The L293 is designed to provide bidirectional drive current of up to 1 amp at a voltage from 4.5 volt to 36 volt, while the L293 D is designed to provide bidirectional drive current of up to 600 mm at voltages from 4.5 volt to 36 volt. Both these devices are designed to drive inductive load such as relays, solenoids, DC and bipolar stepping motors as well as other high current, high voltage loads in positive supply applications. So these are some of the features, as we have said, it provides the wide supply voltage range from 4.5 volt to 36 volt, separate input logic supply, it has the thermal shutdown, high noise humidity input, output current 1 amp per channel, which is 600 mA per channel for the L293 D, the peak output current is 2 amp per channel. For the L293D is 1.2 amp. Output clamp diodes for inductive transient suppression. So you can read more about this device from its data sheet that you can access from Texas Instrument website. You can go through this data sheet to understand more how to use this device. 
So this is how you can connect your L29 3D to your PIC microcontroller. You can connect the first motor to output 1 and 2. If you have a second motor that you want to connect, you can also connect it to output 3 and 4. The VS is the supply voltage of the motor. In this case, we are using a 12 volt motor, so we're going to connect pin 8 to 12 volt. The VSS is the supply voltage of the chip. The EN1 is to enable the first motor. If you connect it to 5 volt, the first drive is going to be enabled. If you connect the second motor, then we'll have to enable the second EN. We've got two grounds that you can connect to your supply ground. By connecting the enable pin to a pulse width modulation pin of a peak microcontroller, the speed of the motor can be controlled as well. We're going to connect in one and in two to RB0 and RB1 of a peak microcontroller to provide control signal to the DC motor. So if we supply a logic 0 to RB0 and a logic 0 to RB1, the motor will stop. If you supply a logic 1 to in 1 and a logic 0 to in 2, the motor is going to rotate in clockwise direction. If we supply a logic 0 to in 1 and logic 1 to in 2, then the motor is going to rotate in anti-clock direction. And if you supply 1 to both pins, then the motor is going to stop as well. Let us go to flow code and create a project to rotate the motor in clockwise direction for 5 seconds, stop it for 2 seconds, and then reverse for 5 seconds. New. Under the peak, the peak family is going to be peak 18F, and the peak that we're going to use in this tutorial is peak 18F26K20. Let's go to configuration. We're gonna use 8 MHz crystal oscillator. It's gonna be an external oscillator. Put P configured as digital input output on reset. And we're gonna disable the MCLR pin. Click OK. Under the microtronics, insert a motor template. We're going to use the full bridge motor, A to 3D system panel. Select the motor. This motor template enables us to control a motor with two pins, pin A and pin B. And this is the pattern to control this motor. Pin A, we're going to connect it to port P as in our circuit diagram. We've got two pins in 1 and in 2 to control our motor. Connected to port RP0 and RP1. So pin A, we're going to connect it to port P0. And pin B to port P, pin 1. To rotate our motor in the forward direction, A is going to be 1, B is going to be 0. To reverse the direction, A is going to be 0, B is going to be 1. And to stop, A is going to be 0 and B is going to be 0. Forward direction, let's say clockwise. Okay, then in our while one loop, component micro, rotate clockwise for five seconds this is just a comment start forward then i'm gonna need a delay icon five second delay five second Then I'm going to stop the motor, stop the motor, two seconds, stop, delay, it's 
gonna be two second a component micro again by the way instead of using the component micro we can also use the output it's gonna give us the same outcome select the output and we are connected to port B and in this case you can select the value that we want to send to port B in this case it's gonna be 2 and ok so basically it's gonna be the same to make it simple we're just gonna use the component micro and here it's gonna be reverse start reverse ok and the delay is gonna be 5 seconds again This is a while one loop, it's gonna loop continuously. We're gonna send a one to our motor. Then five second delay, we're gonna stop. So this is gonna be to output zero zero to RB0 and RB1. By the way, this should be port B. Okay. Then two second delay. Then we're gonna reverse, we're gonna send a two. Two in binary is zero one then five second delay again that simulate 3d panel you can see the motor is rotating then stop then reverse again stop we're gonna need to stop again after the reverse before it start in the forward direction so component micro stop okay and the delay is gonna be two seconds simulate again so five seconds forward direction stop for two seconds reverse for five seconds then it's gonna stop again two seconds and the cycle is gonna start again okay me save my project gonna name it DC Moto save me compile to hex compile my project close let us go to a protea simulation edit DC motor 2 open ok run so it's rotating in the forward direction for 5 seconds then reverse then stop for 2 seconds then the cycle start again so basically this is how you can control your DC motor using the L29 3D chip thank you guys for watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials in the future and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you